Hey everyone, and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey, and today we're going to be doing a full setup guide for Nether SX2 on Android to play our favorite PlayStation 2 games. As of this video, Nether SX2 Classic is the best PS2 emulator on Android. Combining all of the best parts of Aether SX2 and Nether SX2 Current, or the other version, into one with the latest build. It's also the only one that's officially supported by Retro Achievements. So long story short, you want this going forward. Also, don't worry, this entire video is going to be done on an Android handheld, so you don't need a PC. So, just quickly, if you're coming here from a previous version of Aether SX2, or a different version of Nether SX2, let me help you back up your stuff so you can restore it to this new version. It's actually very, very easy. Open Aether SX2 or Nether SX2, whatever you have, head to Settings, Transfer Data, and select Export. You now need to choose a folder, so just create a folder named whatever you want in your Downloads folder, and then choose that. It's going to pop up with a list of what it's going to export which if you check it, it is basically everything that we want. Keep in mind that if you use save states, those will not work when transferring. So make sure that you have actual in-game saves before doing this. Click yes to do its thing, and then we'll come back later when it's time to import. At this point, you should probably uninstall Aether SX2 or Nether SX2 as it will conflict with installing the new version. So just keep that in mind. All right, now before we actually start the setup, you are going to need PlayStation 2 games. Of course, you're also going to need a BIOS file. I would suggest just simply creating a ROMs folder on your internal storage or your SD card, and then creating a PS2 folder inside of it. That's where we're gonna put all of our PS2 games. Now, as far as actually finding the games yourself, the ROMs GitHub is a great resource, but they only have ISO formatted ROMs and you want CHD formatted ROMs, especially since it saves a bunch of space. Instead, the PS2 redump on archive.org is your best option, and they are all CHD formatted. Just remember that you need to be logged in to download anything. Now for BIOS, which you are absolutely going to need, the PS2-0230A-2008-0220 is the best option, and thankfully, it is right on the ROMs GitHub website. They have a bunch of BIOS images there, so just grab that one as a download and make sure that you extract it. I personally use an app called Solid Explorer for all of my file management in Android, and you can do that right in that app. And then just move that file into your PS2 ROMs folder for just ease of access. Don't skip this, you absolutely need a BIOS file. Now, just quickly, for those of you that are wondering why CHD files instead of ISO, CHD is lossless and it saves you a ton of space. It's a lot more compressed. You can still use ISO if you want. CHD is just better. Let's say you have 100 gigabytes of PS2 ISOs. I can guarantee you that at least 30 gigabytes would be saved by using CHD instead. Now, if you have ISOs already and you want to convert it to CHD, this would be the only part of today's guide that you would need a PC for, but I'll leave a link in the description to my website that tells you how to do that for those of you that want to do that. All right, so at this point, let's finally install Nether SX2 Classic. Head to the Nether SX2 Classic GitHub in the description and download the latest release, which as of this video, it is version 2.0a, and you want to ignore any experimental releases. In the future, just grab whatever the latest is, and you can see the latest tag next to the title if you're unsure. If there is two options to download, like there is today, grab the one that says Signed instead of OL. Once you've installed it, go ahead and open it. Just click Next and then Next again. On this screen, we can adjust some settings now if you want, or we can just do it later. So let's do it later. Click Next. It's now asking you to import your BIOS files. And remember, we downloaded that BIOS file earlier. So just navigate to it and select it. If you forgot, it should be in your PS2 ROMs folder if you've been following along. Make sure to select it in the list and then click Next. We now have to tell NetherSX2 where our PS2 games are. So head to your internal storage or SD card, 
wherever you created your ROMs folder, and then select that PS2 folder that we created. Go ahead and click Next, and then Finish. It should now import all of your games. This might take some time. For those of you that backed up your previous Aether SX2 or Nether SX2, you can now import. Head to Settings, Transfer Data, and then Import. Choose the folder that we created earlier in your Downloads folder, and then select it. It's going to ask you what you want to import, and you can go ahead and leave them all selected, and then just click OK to let it do its thing. All right, so first things first, let's change some settings. Click the three lines top left and head to app settings. You can now see some of the settings that we ignored before. They are all in these tabs and menu. So in the general tab, let's enable patch codes, which is essentially cheats. We'll talk about cheats later. Scroll down and if you have a device that constantly flips the screen, you can set the screen orientation here. Now, if you want to show FPS or speed and other stats to see how games are running, you can enable that here. I'm going to enable it now just to show you what it looks like. Lastly, OSD scale controls how big the text is for the stats that we just enabled. Sometimes it's just a bit too small on some screens, and so you can increase that here if it is. Head over to system and then scroll down to speed control. If you have a powerful device and you find that 200% isn't fast enough for fast forward, you can adjust that here. I wouldn't touch anything else. Head to graphics and this is the fun stuff. You can change the renderer if you want. I personally typically leave it on OpenGL, but some games will do better with Vulkan instead. So it all depends. I'm gonna show you later how to change this on a per game basis if you feel like testing between the two. Now, if you have a powerful device, we can upscale the resolution here. So I'm gonna set it to 1080p, which is 3x native, because I'm using a pretty powerful device. But for a lot of you, you likely can't do this. So maybe just leave it at 1x for now until you know if you have the power to upscale it. Once again, I will show you how to do this on a per game basis, so you can adjust this for each game. If you have a 16 by nine aspect ratio screen, I would enable widescreen patches so that you can get widescreen PS2 games. It is nice and super helpful. Threaded presentation is important if you're using a Mali GPU device. It would be helpful to enable this if you are. So definitely try it out if it's something that you're interested in. Lastly, at the bottom, enable load texture replacements. This is gonna be applicable, especially if you plan on doing HD texture packs. And we'll talk about that later. Head over to memory cards, and this is important. Click create new card, and then select folder, and give it a name, memcard1 works for me. Go ahead and click create. Scroll down to card name, click it, and then change it to the card that we just created. So why did we do that? Well, if you went with the default card option, it's gonna fill up after you've played and saved in a few different games, and that gets very, very annoying. Instead, with the folder option, it saves each game as a different card, and it is vastly, vastly better with no downside. It is a nice little upgrade. The second card no longer matters, so don't worry about it. Head over to game list, and if you ever move your PS2 ROMs, maybe to an SD card or somewhere else, this is where you can come to tell Nether SX2 where they are now. So you can delete the existing location and then add a new location, if you ever move them. The Achievements tab is where you can sign in with your Retro Achievements login and information if you have it, and you want to do so. I do want to do so, so I will. Back out now and let's go to Controller Settings. Head to Touchscreen, and if you're using a controller or a handheld, set Touchscreen Controller View to None to remove the on-screen touch controls. If you scroll all the way down, you're going to see Enable Game Vibration, and if you want Rumble, you can turn this on. This may not work for every controller or device, so just be aware. Head over to port 1, and we can now configure our handheld or controller. I wouldn't rely on automatic mapping, as it could map things incorrectly, so let's do it ourselves. Scroll to bindings and then start to map your controller by selecting each button and then pushing that button on your controller or handheld that you want it to match. Skip analog toggle and apply pressure. You don't need them. You can stop after mapping right stick left. Head over to the hotkeys tab 
and I like to map fast forward toggle to L3 plus R2. Now, normally you don't need to map open pause menu as many handhelds or controllers have a back button to open it, but feel free to map this if you don't have a back button. Maybe L3 plus X would be good for you. For quick load, I like L3 plus L1, and for quick save, I like L3 plus R1. Head back, and this time let's choose Start BIOS. Go to System Configuration. Push down, and you're going to see Screen Size, and if you're using a 16x9 device, change it to 16x9. Now, if you mapped Pause, push it or push back on your controller or handheld, or swipe up and hit the back arrow, and choose Exit Game. Now, what we just did there was tell the PS2 BIOS that we have a 16x9 display. So, games that have that built-in 16x9 mode can now use them without using widescreen patches. We'll look at this scenario in a second. Let's boot up a game by selecting it in the list. The first game that you save in is likely going to want to format the PS2 memory card. So, just let it. You shouldn't be asked to do that ever again. You can see the FPS information in the top right. And now let's look at the pause menu. Push pause again, and we're back in this in-game menu. There is a few things that you can do here. There's patch codes for cheats. You can change disc for multi-disc games and so on. But take a look at the top right. If you click the I button, this means that any changes that you make here will only apply to this specific game. So it is per game settings. So if we head to graphics, maybe this game we want to run at a lower resolution, or a different GPU renderer, or maybe this game has native 16x9 support, so we don't need widescreen patches and we can turn them off for this game. You can set all of that here as long as you hit the I button in the top right. You also might need to set the aspect ratio to 16x9 for games that support it on a per game basis. Now, alternatively, if you hit the settings cog in the top right, any changes that you make here apply globally to all games. So you can easily make changes for all games right here. I'm personally just going to go turn off all of that FPS information in the top right. Head over to the controller icon and you're going to see an option here called per game configuration. Now, if you turn that on, any changes that you make for the controller will only apply to this specific game. So you can even save a profile if you want and then load it for another game too. If you turn off per game configuration, any changes made here will apply to all games. To exit, just choose exit game from the in-game menu. All right, so let's talk HD texture packs now. This may not work on newer Android devices or devices that aren't rooted since we need access to Android's data storage. There is an awesome website with a bunch of them linked in the description. So let's find the game that we want, and I'm going to choose Ratchet and & Clank. And if you scroll over, you have to make sure that it's for the region that you have the game in, so the US region for me, and I'm going to click that. It is likely going to bring you to GBA Temp, that website, and sometimes even tells you how to install it. But don't worry, I'm going to show you how. Download the texture pack. Go ahead and extract it. It is going to take a very, very long time to extract. There is a ton of files. When I say very long, I mean very long. It took me an entire day, and I'm not joking. When it is finally extracted, hours later, head to Android, Data, XYZ, AetherSX2, Android, Files, in the Textures folder. Copy the extracted folder. It should be the game serial number. So mine is SCUS97199. And I'm going to paste that into the textures folder. Go ahead and open the game and you'll see textures loaded top left and you're good to go. Next up is cheats. Cheats are kind of a disaster on Nether SX2. Unlike DuckStation, you can't enable or disable individual cheats in Nether SX2. You have to do it all in the text file. I'll show you how, but honestly, this is rarely worth using. We are going to use the awesome website of gamehacking.org, and let's look for the game. I'm personally just going to do Ratchet and Clank again. I have the NTSC or the USA version. If you are ever not sure, match the serial number to the game, and you can find the game serial number in NetherSX2 
by tapping and holding on the game, choosing game properties, and the serial number is right there. You want to change the format to panache, and then you can leave it as all cheats, which would suck, or you can do checked cheats, which also sucks, but for a different reason. In that scenario, you have to go through and check box all of the cheats that you want, and then in either event, whichever one you chose, just click download. Now, if you chose all cheats, or even if you chose check cheats, rename the file to panache instead of txt, and then open it in a file editor. This is the part that sucks. You are going to have to add two forward slashes in front of any cheat that you want to disable, because otherwise, if you add this file to NetherSX2 now, it's going to try and load every single cheat, and it will crash your game. So, every line that starts with patch to disable that cheat, you have to put two forward slashes. To enable the cheat, remove the slashes. Again, there is no way in NetherSX2 to do this in a better way, which is why this entire thing is just kind of a disaster. Save whatever changes you make to that file, head back to the game and open Ratchet, and then open the in-game menu. Go to Patch Codes, and then click Don't Ask Again after reading the warning. You should read the warning. Click Add Patch, and then Import from File, and choose the file that we just downloaded, the Ratchet & Clank Panache file. It's going to say Cheats Loaded, top left, and hopefully it didn't just crash your game. But this can destroy your save, and a bunch of other things could go wrong, so be very careful with this. Now, you can select Clear Patches to clear all of the cheats, as in delete them, or Disable Patches to disable cheats entirely. Last thing is knowing where NetherSX2 saves all of its data. Again, it is the same location as the HD Texture Packs. You might not have access to this folder, but it is in the Android, Data, XYZ AetherSX2 Android, Files folder. Now, cheats would be any imported patches. Game settings is any game specific settings. Mem cards is your memory cards. S states is your save states. And textures is your HD textures. So, if you're a sync thing person wanting to sync these across to PCSX2 or another NetherSX2 device, all of the folders that I mentioned are safe to do, except S states. States will not work across devices. Now, if you're on a device that can't access this folder, the transfer data export option can export all of this manually for you to do that whenever you want. It just can't be automatic. Otherwise, that's really all there is to NetherSX2 in setting it up, configuring it, and getting you ready to play some games. We went over everything and anything that I could personally think of, and you should be able to do anything and everything that you want in NetherSX2 using today's guide and the different timestamps. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow. Come join me on the Discord to talk all about handhelds and emulation. Support me on Patreon if you like my stuff. And hope you all have a good one.